Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to Mingles with Jingles. And quick announcement before we get started. Uh, next Sunday is the first Sunday in December, so that's when we're going to be once again hosting the monthly Salt Mines Discord Q&A. As always, it starts at 11am UK time on the Salt Mines Discord server, with the question channel being opened up for your questions 15 minutes early. And also, as always, if you can't make it, then don't worry because the whole thing will be going up as Mingles with Jingles on the following Monday. And now, what's been going on this week? What, what's everybody been getting their knickers in a twist over since the last episode? Well, this year's nominations for the 2024 Game Awards were uh, released. Actually, they might have been released the week before. I'm not sure. But I only noticed that they'd been released. And oh boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, the Game Awards, they're just becoming increasingly irrelevant, aren't they? Um, it's not so much about the games as it is about major publishers advertising the games that have yet to be released and getting celebrity endorsements. Uh, last year's Game Awards 2023 uh, received a lot of criticism, and justifiably so, for the dismissive way that they actually handled the people and companies who were winning the awards compared to all the celebrities that turned up. Typically, if you were a game developer who ended up on stage thanking everybody for whatever award you'd just won, you were given around about 30 seconds to wrap it all up and get off the stage. This is how they were treating the winners of the Game Awards, you know, the, the reason the whole award ceremony exists. But the celebrity guests, on the other hand, were given as much time as they wanted to waffle on about, well, whatever they wanted. So they attracted a lot of flack for that. This year, 2024, the awards haven't even been shown, and they're already attracting criticism. This time... It's for the nominations. You see, the thing that you need to understand about the Game Awards is that your vote is almost entirely meaningless. For a start, you don't get to nominate anything. You do get to vote, however, on the titles that have been nominated in the various different categories, but your vote is only worth 10% of the final voting number, with the other 90% coming from industry specialists, games journalists, news media outlets who've all been nominated by a selection committee. And who's on the selection committee? Excellent question. Glad you asked. The selection committee, you know, the people who choose who it is who gets to nominate and cast 90% of the votes on those nominations, determining the winners, the selection committee is composed of organisations like Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo... You're seeing where this is going now, aren't you? <laughs> um, yeah. Which is why I say that your vote is basically meaningless. Because the big publishers and hardware manufacturers get to pick their favourites to nominate and vote on their games. Which is why you end up with things like DLC this year being nominated in the Game of the Year category. Yeah, that's a thing now. Elden Ring, Shadow of the Erd Tree. It's not a game. Elden Ring is a game. Shadow of the Erd Tree is an expansion, or DLC, for a game. And it's a very, very good and well-received expansion, but it's not a game. And yet somehow it ended up being nominated in the Game of the Year category. I think the one category that tells you absolutely everything that you need to know about the current state of the Game of the Year awards is the Action Adventure category. Best Action Adventure Game. Of the games that have been nominated, only one of them is not from Sony, Nintendo, or Ubisoft. And that's Silent Hill 2 from Konami. And of the two Ubisoft games that got nominated for Best Action Adventure Game, one of them is Star Wars Outlaws. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> I mean, I like Star Wars Outlaws, but I don't pretend it's any good. This is a game that sold so poorly and was so badly received that it threw the entire future of their publisher, Ubisoft, into jeopardy. It's a game that's only been out three months, and you can already get it for a 25% discount on Steam, a platform where, by the way, it is only currently enjoying 65% positive reviews. And this somehow managed to make it into the top five nominations for the best action adventure game of 2024 in the Game Awards. I don't know what it cost Ubisoft to get that nomination, but they ain't fooling nobody. 
The thing about the Shadow of the Earth Tree nomination for Game of the Year, oh, and it's also got nominated for Best RPG, is that they, the Game Awards do actually have a category for stuff that didn't actually come out in 2024, or, you know, whatever current year it is for that year's Game Awards. It's called the Best Ongoing Game category. Although that itself is a bit of a joke as well, because one of the nominations there is Diablo 4. <laughs> it's ongoing, all right. It's an ongoing shit show. I don't know why they don't just have a best DLC or best expansion category in the Game Awards, because that's where Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree belongs. It certainly does not belong in the Game of the Air category, because it's not a game that came out this year. Stick it in the best expansion or best DLC category, which doesn't currently exist, but, you know, if it did, it would probably win. Well, it might, because it would be up against some very, very stiff competition if there was such a thing as the best expansion or the best DLC category in the Game Awards, because let's not forget, this was the year that Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty came out. So where's Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty in this year's Game Awards nominations? Oh, that's right. Nowhere. Shadow of the Earth Tree got nominated Game of the Year, Best Game Direction, Best Art Direction, and Best Role-Playing Game. And it's not even a game that came out in 2024. It's an expansion for a game that came out in 2022. Then again, they did kind of set the precedent in the 2023 Game Awards, didn't they? Because that's when Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty came out, the expansion for Cyberpunk, which itself was released in 2020. And of course... Phantom Liberty did amazingly well in last year's Game Awards. I mean, securing nominations in Game of the Year, Best Art Direction, Best Role Playing Game, Best Audio, Best Score, uh, Best Narrative, and winning in. Oh, wait, no, that's right. Didn't receive a single nomination. Why? Because it's not a game, it's an expansion for a game. Cyberpunk itself got a couple of nominations, I think in the Best Ongoing Game category, and I think it actually won in the Best Community Support category, but Phantom Liberty? Nada. Zilch. Nothing. Why? It's not a fucking game, that's why. Meanwhile, Shadow of the Earth Tree. <laughs> yeah. You can see why nobody really pays attention to the Game Awards anymore. So, what has everybody else been getting their knickers in a twist over this week? Well, how about that gold ammo in World of Warships? Yeah, no, not really. Although... You could be forgiven for thinking so, based on all the hysterical headlines. This has all come from a World of Warships development blog post that was made on the 16th of November. And I'll read the post for you here. They're, they're talking about a bunch of new ships that are going to be introduced with new funny buttons. These ships like to live life on the edge. They'll get increased accuracy and reduced main battery reload time based on how many hit points they've lost. So they begin the battle with a partially depleted health pool and you can choose to repair and reduce the bonuses or play dangerously and attempt to make the most of them. All modifiers that depend on hit point percentage such as the Adrenaline Rush Commander skill will function normally giving these ships even more of a punch. But here's what's gotten everybody excited. Captains will enter battle with access to a limited stock of improved armor-piercing ammunition, which can be used via the burst fire mode. It will feature double salvos with much higher damage per minute than standard firing, but the drawback is that it has a limited range that cannot be increased. So you need to get in close to use this stuff. The improved characteristics of these shells will include, but are not limited to, ballistics, ricochet angles and fuse time. This ammunition can be thought of like a consumable. Captains will always enter battle with the same number of shells each time, and we'll need to choose the proper moment to make use of their limited supply. After running out, only regular armor-piercing shells with normal characteristics will be available. So, somebody read this dev blog post and said, Oh my god, gold ammunition in World of Warships, and everybody lost their minds. And I suddenly started seeing comments popping up on all of my videos saying, Jingles, what do you think about the gold ammunition they're introducing in World of Warships? I thought, uh, fuck. <laughs> oh, this I need to, I need to find out more. And so I actually went and read the dev blog post, and I just read it to you, and it, it's not gold ammunition, is it? It's a new consumable. It's not even the first time they've introduced a consumable or a funny button into the game that gave a ship increased value on one of its ammunition types. There was a... I can't remember what it was. Relatively recently, I think there was one of the Spanish cruisers that when you triggered the funny button, it suddenly got increased high explosive penetration. And there were basically no downsides to using it. You certainly didn't suffer a reduced range penalty whenever you triggered the funny button that activated it. And nobody cared about that. 
but everyone's losing their minds over what's being labelled as gold ammo in World of Warships. Although when you put it like that, I mean, it, it does sound perfectly reasonable. Because I'd be losing my mind if they were introducing gold ammo into World of Warships. But the fact that the headline says gold ammo doesn't mean that that's actually what it is. And I think people are just losing their minds over the headline rather than actually reading the article that the headline comes from. Because it's not gold ammo. Now they've said that this new ammunition, the limited ammunition consumable, will have higher damage per minute. But that doesn't necessarily mean the shells are going to do more damage. They've said it's only going to be available via this burst fire mode. And it's going to have better penetration angles and better fuse times which would translate you know if you're firing more of them and there's less chance that they're going to ricochet then yeah that's going to increase damage per minute it doesn't necessarily mean that each individual shell is going to be doing more damage although it also doesn't mean that they won't so i mean yeah you're going to need to keep an eye on this because it always pays to keep an eye on wargaming this wouldn't be the first time they've tried to sneak some sneaky shit in under the radar but I don't think this is actually what it's being made out to be. Certainly not by the more hysterical commenters. Because, look at this logically. Okay, you've got gold ammo in World of Tanks. Which, 100%, no shit, was a pay-to-win mechanic. You had to buy gold. Well, okay, there was, there was one way of getting gold without having to put your hand in your pocket, and that was by doing well in clan wars. But for the overwhelming majority of World of Tanks customers... The only way to get gold ammo was to buy gold and then use the gold to buy gold ammo. And then Wargaming did something incredibly smart, you know, credit where credit's due. They pulled a blinder of a PR move by making gold ammo available for credits, the in-game currency that you earn just by playing battles. Everybody said, there you go, it's not pay to win anymore. Except all they did was shift where the spending occurred. Because sure, you didn't have to put your hand in your pocket and buy gold in order to buy gold ammo. But you did have to put your hand in your pocket to buy a premium account in order to be able to finance the purchase of gold ammo with credit. So all they did was shift the spending from one place to another and fool the heart of thinking and thinking that World of Tanks wasn't paid to win anymore. Because if you think that Wargaming, or any other business for that matter, are ever going to do anything that's going to earn them less money, you must be new here. And okay, yeah, sure, game developers and publishers do stuff that backfires on them and earns them less money all the time. But that's because they're greedy and stupid, not because they plan to earn less money. Meanwhile, in World of Warships, and I think one of the reasons why a lot of people emigrated to World of Warships from World of Tanks, you never had gold ammunition. You could never put your hand in your pocket and buy ammunition for the ships that had better properties than the regular stuff that you settled out from your port with. But... You could buy advantages. And I'm not just talking here about premium ships that were better than the equivalent tier um, non-premium ships of the same class. And yeah, sure, they've done that. And, but they've also introduced premium ships that are significantly worse. Yeah, Krasny Krim. Y yeah, we, you all know who we're looking at. Now I'm talking about skins, camouflage patterns. Because there was a time, in fact, for the majority of the lifetime of World of Warships, there was a time when you could put your hand in your pocket and buy camouflage skins for your ships that not only made your ship harder to detect, but also reduced the accuracy of shots being fired at you. I mean, that was a straight-up pay-to-win element. And they got rid of that. And they have introduced premium ships that are more than a little bit overpowered. And a couple of years ago, they suggested actually nerfing those ships to bring them into line uh, with the other non-premium stuff. And everybody lost their minds over that. They said, oh, I didn't spend good money on the Belfast and, you know, certain other overpowered premiums to have you nerf them after the fact. And, well, they quickly walked back on that one. Although the cynical among us may suspect that they only announced intentions to nerf premium ships or certain premium ships because they knew exactly what the response would be. And they could point to this response as a reason for justifying why they weren't going to mess around with future overpowered premium ships from then on in. I wouldn't put it past them. That, that might have in fact have been the reason why they suggested nerfing certain premiums in the first place. Knowing that it was never actually going to happen and they could use that in the future. But these new mechanics for new ships that I think they're introducing. I, I genuinely do not see why everybody's getting so excited about it. And, and it's certainly not gold ammo. I mean, they've introduced things in the past that are 
are 100% now taken for granted. Things like the French reload booster, for example, on French battleships, cruisers, hell, I think certain French destroyers get it as well. There is no downside to using that. It's just a straight up DPM gain. You don't have to close into close range in order to use it. It doesn't put your guns on a longer cooldown, like some of the funny buttons that they've introduced since. Nobody complains about that, but everybody's losing their mind about this. And yet at the same time, nobody appears to give a shit that they've just sneaked guided missiles into the game. Wait, what? Guided missiles? When did this happen? Yeah. The new Star Trek Halloween game mode. Wargaming have a long and proud tradition of testing stuff that they plan on implementing by including it in each year's Halloween game mode. The Halloween game mode is where we first saw submarines. The Halloween game mode is where we first saw homing torpedoes. They constantly use the Halloween game mode each year to test new stuff that they're thinking of implementing later on down the line. And what's so special about this year's Halloween event, the Star Trek event? Photon torpedoes. Essentially, they're just very, very fast homing torpedoes that fly through the air instead of flying through the water. Well, swimming through the... you know, you, you get what I'm at. Basically, they're currently testing guided missiles in World of Warships via the Halloween event, the new Star Trek game mode. And nobody seems to care. <laughs> you absolutely should. Because if they're testing them in the Halloween event, and they are, I'm predicting that within about six months, you're going to see some dev blog notes announcing that they're testing guided missiles on the public test server in random battles probably within the next six months, maybe a year. But it is going to happen because they've already spent development time and money on it. And by the time it makes it on the public test server, it'll be way too late to complain about it because they will have spent too much development time and money on it to consider backing down. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if Wargaming were quite happy that everybody was going on about gold ammo in World of Warships from the latest uh, dev blog notes, because it's quite obviously not gold ammo in World of Warships. And so they can quite happily ignore it, because it's a storm in a teacup, it doesn't matter. And while everybody's going on about the gold ammo non-issue, nobody's complaining about their plans to introduce guided missiles, which has apparently slipped under everybody's radar. So I guess the thing is here, I mean, I don't want to just come out and say no wargaming aren't going to introduce gold ammo into World of Warships, because that's the kind of quote that could come back and bite me in the arse three years from now. But I'm pretty sure they're not introducing gold ammo now. They're definitely introducing guided missiles, though. And I'm just amazed that people are complaining about the gold ammo non-issue, and nobody's complaining about the very real guided missile issue. Well played, wargaming. Well played. And on that bombshell, that's it for this week's episode of Mingles with Jingles. I hope it's given you something to think about, and I'm pretty sure it's probably given you something to talk about in the comments, and hey, that's what the comments are for. In the meantime, as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.